friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a known case of eye face the other eye had severe floppiness of the iris during surgery so i have planned this surgery in a little different way let us observe this this is the main incision with a 2.8 mm steel keratom on the posterior aspect of the limbus this is a side port on the left side of the main incision about 2 clock hours away and now an air bubble is being injected into the anterior chamber my plan is to stain the anterior capsule with trypan blue dye underneath this air bubble if we use air bubble staining is quick this is a bit of adrenaline let us see if the people dilate little more with adrenaline as i wash the dye out i find that yes the people has dilated little more with the help of the adrenaline and now visco is injected into the anterior chamber as i inject visco the people has dilated little more it is about 5.5 mm now so my plan is to do a rexis of the size of the people so i go along the border of the people to get an adequate sized rexis i'm using this utrita forceps to do the rexis and it is done this is real time and now hydro dissection is very important we should inject a little amount of fluid and see the fluid wave as it goes to the opposite equator immediately we should stop we should not inject too much fluid if we do that there can be rupture of the posterior capsule there can be fluid build up behind the lens mass and the posterior capsule may rip apart now watch this this is dividing the nucleus with this pre chopper the two instruments come to each other we should take care of the rexis margin and i could not divide this hemi nucleus tried again but it didn't happen but however we have got two hemi nuclei inject visco and now my plan is to try dividing the other hemineucleus go in rotate the lens mass and hook the equator and i could divide the nucleus nicely into three pieces one hemineucleus and the other hemineucleus has been divided into two smaller pieces why so my plan is to use the chopper as minimally as possible because in such cases when there is eye face the iris tends to come into the side ports and if we use the chopper we do iris stromal shaping however i could not get the free fragments and i had to go in with the pre chopper so what i do is i divide and i come out and i try to emulsify this piece by the fico pro itself and i could do that and i find that this is a large piece so what i do is i hold it go again and as i do that i find that the iris has incarcerated into the side port and whenever it happens we should not come out we can come out after removing the fecal probe as we remove the fecal probe iris will fall back and we can remove the chopper 
If we don't do this, we will cause iris stromal injury by the chopper. Now injected visco, as I go in with irrigation, the people will dilate a little more and yes, it has dilated a little more and we can manage without using the chopper. So in this case, what I did differently is I used the pre-chopper to manage this case of IFIS. And what has happened? I could manage the case without using any iris hook or any people expansion ring. Now I come out since I have made only one side port, my plan is to use this instrument. This is a 23G Simco for removal of the cortex. The trick is we should elevate the anterior leap of the main wound little bit to balance inflow and outflow so that the antechamber is maintained. So most of the thing is removed. Now remove the sub incisional cortex going through the side port. We have made only one side port. Size of this side port is about 1.7 millimeter. If we had made two side ports of 1.2 millimeter each, it would have been 2.4 millimeter. This side port is less than that. And now implantation of the intraocular lens. Inject visco, let the people dilate. You can see the rexus margin nicely. I am enlarging the main wound by 0 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter so that I can easily implant the intraocular lens. This is a B cartridge. If we use C cartridge, we need not use we need not extend the main wound. The lens goes into the capsular bag and now I will rotate the lens because I want to go behind the intraocular lens and remove visco from the capsular bag. If I don't do that, there is a a risk of there is a chance of visco induced raised IOP in the postoperative period. I don't want that. And now I am dedicating about three minutes time to remove the visco thoroughly. I want to do this because I don't want any raised intraocular pressure in the postoperative period. So I'm using the Simco cannula first to irrigate the anterior chamber, to irrigate the capsular bag and aspirate for some time and remove some amount of visco. Then I will use the bimanual irrigation aspiration for some time. Now let us discuss what I have done differently in this case. Earlier I used to manage these cases using iris hooks or a people expansion ring or somehow I could manage. There would be too much iris injury as I as the iris got incarcerated in the side port. So in this case I have divided the nucleus with the pre chopper into pieces and I have used the chopper only once or twice and as I saw that the iris has incarcerated. I didn't remove the chopper causing iris injury. I just removed the FACO probe first, let the iris fall down, fall back and then removed the chopper. In this way I removed the iris. So we should not take care of the posterior capsule and corneal endothelium only. 
you must take care of all the tissues particularly iris in case of floppiness in case of iphis intraoperative floppy iris syndrome there is a lot of problems in some in such cases there is high chance of catching the iris with the phaco probe and a lot of other things so here we conclude the case after forming the anterior chamber and checking the integrity of the wound thank you very much for your attention hope this video will encourage you to use this pre chopper in case of iphis but you must use this pre chopper first in routine cases in well dilated people then only you will be able to use this instrument in these difficult cases